friends, in this video, we are going to discuss some of the important terms as well as initiatives that we need to study under the environmental conventions as well as protocols. So as we all know, when we consider the module people, development and environment, the important conventions and protocols related to the environment are a very important area that we need to focus on. So we have some of the important uh, protocols or conventions which includes uh, the Kyoto Protocol, Montreal Protocol, the Paris Agreement, the Earth Summit. There are a lot of important initiatives that we need to identify. Basically, the convention submits or protocols or even agreements that we need to study under this module. And there are certain terms or certain initiatives that are associated with these protocols or conventions uh, which are also very important from that point of view. So what we are going to do in this session is uh, we will be focusing on a question that was asked in NTUGC in December 2021 and June 2022 merge cycles and this question was asked for uh, the women's studies or the, the shift women's studies and we will be focusing on this question and through this question we will be coming across four important terms or initiatives that you can associate with the environmental conventions and protocols. So here you have the question. Arise the following terms chronologically according to the time these were first introduced. And we have the options principles of principle of common but differentiated responsibility, sustainable development, nationally determined contributions, clean development mechanism. So what we are going to do in this session is we'll be going to look at each of these uh, terms that are given here and all these terms are associated with certain conventions or protocols. So we need to identify those uh, protocols or conventions or submits or agreements that actually uh, contributed these four different terms or initiatives or ideas that are mentioned here. And that too will be focusing uh, on these terms in the chronological order according to the time uh, in which these were first introduced. So let's move, e move to each and every terms that are mentioned here. So from the list, the first uh, term that we need to identify or chronologically, the first term which was introduced uh, initially was the sustainable development. And this term was coined in the Brutland Report, which was published in the year 1987 by the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development. So it coined the term sustainable de development and it also gave uh, it also gave a definition for that as well. So what do you mean by sustainable development or the report? Brutal report identified or defined sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So what do you mean by sustainable development? We need to uh, fulfill or we need to satisfy or we need to meet the needs of the present generation and also we should consider that these resources are needed for the coming generation as well. So we couldn't or there is no scope for, for us to exploit the nature for our own needs but when we are using uh, the resources that are present here now uh, with the concern of giving a share of these resources to the future generation as well. So that is what this sustainable development is all about. So development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So this is the first uh, term uh, in the sense if you consider the question we have four different terms that are given there. Out of those four sustainable development was the first term. Uh, which came in the order if you consider the chronological order and this sustainable development was actually a term which was uh, coined by the Brutland report which was published in 1987 by the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development. And the second term uh, in the line is common but differentiated responsibilities or CBDR. So this is again a very important concept, uh, concept and what do you mean by this common but differentiated responsibility? So this is a principle of international environmental law which establishes all states are responsible for addressing global environmental destruction yet not equally responsible. It says that all the states have the responsibility of addressing or they have to take, in, uh, take into account the problems that are faced by the environment but at the same time all the states are not equally responsible for that. So what do you mean by that? So this principle actually balances on the one side or the one hand the need for all states to take responsibility for global environmental problems and on the other hand the need to recognize the wide differences in levels of economic development between states. So if you consider 
uh, the different states that are a part of UN, we can identify that all these nations, if you consider, they, there are certain differences between the states that are a part of it, right? So there are states which there, there are developed or industrialized nations as well as developing nations as well. So there is a wide gap uh, in terms of economic as well as technical uh, facilities of the different states that are a part of it. So in that sense, it says that or this principle actually balances this difference. So there is on one hand, it is true, uh, all the states has to take the responsibility for global environmental problems, but at the same time, uh, their responsibility is not equal as well. So there are certain nations which contribute more to this destruction and they are capable of giving more uh, solutions or they are they are capable of giving a hand more uh, to the uh, to to the things that we can make in order to protect the environment as well. So it actually balances that kind of a uh, difference. So the principle balances on the one hand the need for all states to take responsibilities for global environment problems and on the other hand the need to recognize the wide differences in levels of economic development between states. So in, in simpler terms we can say that all states are responsible for addressing global environmental destruction yet not equally responsible. So this idea was first introduced uh, in the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. So if you consider the Rio Summit or the Earth Summit uh, there is one important document that was formulated uh, as a result of this at summit of 1992 and that was the Rio Declaration. So in Rio Declaration, we can see certain principles that are associated with uh, the protection of environment and this concept of common but differentiated responsibilities or CBDR was actually the principle 7 of the Rio Declaration and it was established at the first Rio at summit in 90. 92. Even though it was actually established as the seventh principle in the Rio Declaration, it was formalized in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, which was actually an outcome of this Rio Summit. So there are three Rio Conventions that were uh, formulated or that were happened as a result of this at Summit of 1992 and one, of, uh, one among those three is UNFCCC or the United Nations Framework. Convention on Climate Change and this is the uh, or of this particular idea of CBDR or the common but differentiated responsibility was formalized in the UNFCCCC. Okay, so that is all about common but differentiated responsibilities.
third important term in the chronological order is the clean development mechanism or CDM and the CDM is a part of Kyoto Protocol and you know Kyoto Protocol is a very very important protocol from that point of view and this clean development mechanism is actually a part or it is one of the three flexible mechanisms uh, which were defined in the Kyoto Protocol. So these, uh, these mechanisms that were formulated by Kyoto Protocol actually uh, contributes to the reduction of uh, emissions. So there are three important flexible uh, mechanism or flex flexibility mechanism which includes emission trading. Then we have the CDM that is clean development mechanism and also joint implementation. So if you can just go and read about these three flexibility mechanisms that will be really helpful. And if you please do remember that this is one of the three flex flexible mechanisms defined in the Kyoto Protocol. And this Kyoto Protocol was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on 11th December. 1997 and hence got the name of Kyoto Protocol and it officially came into force in 2005. So what I mean by this Kyoto Protocol or, or uh, in this particular session we will be just focusing on the clean development mechanism which was introduced by Kyoto Protocol. So the clean development mechanism defined in article 12 of the protocol allows a country with an emission reduction or emission limitation commitment under the Kyoto Protocol to implement an emission reduction project in developing countries. Such projects can earn saleable certified emission reduction credits each equivalent to one ton of CO2 which can be counted towards meeting Kyoto target. So to make it more simpler we can say that if you consider the Annex B parties in the Kyoto protocol it is basically the industrialized uh, nations that we can see there and also uh, the economies in transition EIT can be also considered there. Uh, in general you can see that the industrialized uh, nations can be considered an Annex B party. So what is the, the concept here? So these parties, the NXP parties in Kyoto Protocol, they actually implement or they actually provide or they establish some emission reduction projects in developing countries. So they are actually contributing or financially or technical assistance or support will be given and they will be establishing emission reduction projects in developing countries. And as a part of this uh, projects, these countries will be getting earn or saleable certified emission reductions or CER credits. Okay, so in return of this uh, development that was made in their countries, the developing countries will be giving these CER credits to the industrialized nation. I'll just show you a picture so this will be more clearer for you. So what do you mean by CDM concept? The industrialized countries or the developed countries or the NXP party countries in the Kyoto Protocol, they will be giving finance or technology capacity building support to the developing countries and they will be establishing or they will be providing with emission reduction projects in developing countries. Okay, so when they are having a development in this particular field or if a developing country is having an emission reduction project happening in their country, they will be getting what? This carbon credits which is known as the certified emission reduction or CER credits. So as uh, a return of what they have made or of the development that was contributed by the industrialized country, this developing country will be given giving this carbon credits to the industrialized country. So what is the point here? The developing country needs more development. So this emission reduction uh, development programs will actually help them in their development. And also this industrialized countries or this Annex B party countries actually what is their need? They need carbon credits because they have more uh, emission, right? Because they have more emission. So they need more carbon credits or GHG or greenhouse gas emission rights. So when they are contributing a development to these developing countries, they will actually give them back this carbon credit. So this is how development as well as environmental sustain sustainability uh, go hand in hand. So this is a mechanism which is termed as the clean development mechanism which is defined as a part of Kyoto Protocol. So the last and final term that is mentioned here in the chronological order in the question is nationally determined contribution or NDC or which can be also termed as intended nationally determined contribution or INDC. All right. So this particular idea is actually a part of Paris Agreement. Okay. The Paris Agreement requires each party to prepare, communicate and maintain successive nationally determined contributions that MPD efforts by each country to reduce national emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. We know that Paris Agreement is actually an initiative 
that contribute or that uh, focuses on the issue of climate change. So this Paris Agreement requires each party, each party that uh, belongs to this particular agreement to contribute or to communicate about their own nationally determined contributions. That means, that means what they can do, each nation, what they can do uh, in order to or what they can contribute in order to uh, sustain or what they can contribute to the efforts uh, by or the efforts through which we can actually address the issue of climate change or the efforts to reduce the national emissions and thereby uh, we can control the climatic changes. So this is what this uh, nationally determined contribution focuses on. So Paris Agreement requires its member states or the parties to contribute or to communicate their own national contribution to the larger efforts of reducing national emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. So this Paris Agreement, we what we're focusing here is we are trying to figure out the ideas that are or the terms, the ideas behind the terms that are given in the question and that too in the chronological order. So we said that NDC or nationally determined contribution as a part of Paris Agreement. So Paris Agreement was actually adopted on 12th December 2015 and it entered into force on 4th November. 2016. So coming back to the question, the question is or the question focuses on arranging the following terms chronologically according to the time these were first introduced and we said that the first term uh, from the options is sustainable development which was actually a, a term coined uh, in the Brutland report. So that is sustainable development. The second one we have discussed was the principle of common but differentiated responsibility. This idea came as a part of the Rio Declaration, uh, which was actually formulated as a part of the Rio at Summit in 1992. And then we discussed about clean development mechanism, which is actually a part of the flexible mechanisms, uh, the flexibility mechanisms of Kyoto Protocol. And finally, we have discussed about the nationally determined contributions, which is a part of Paris Agreement, right? And it came into force in 2016 and it was adopted in 2015. So what is the correct chronological order? We have B, then we have A, then we have uh, D and C. B, A, D, C will be the correct order. So B, A, D, C is option C. So the right answer is option C itself. So in this video, what we have focused is four important terms or initiatives that you should remember when it comes to the environmental conventions and protocols. All these four terms are very important and also the agreements, protocols or convention or even submits in which these four terms were formulated is again a very important area that you have to focus on. So I hope this video will be really helpful in your preparations. So thanks for watching and happy learning.